Welcome to our review on the eye. So the first thing we actually need to understand then is the structure of the eye and the key parts that are involved in it. So our eyes are just used to actually detect light and therefore allow us to see what's around us. So what we actually have inside the eye that allows us to do this are receptors that are used to detect the light. So one of the things they do like to ask you is what detects the light and the answer would be a receptor. So what those receptors actually do is they're going to change the light into an electrical impulse that then passes from the eyeball along the optic nerve and to our brain, which then interprets those impulses and tells us what we see. So in the diagram at the bottom there, you can see those key features. So you do need to be able to label one of those diagrams in the exam. So you've got the pupil, the iris, the retina, cornea, lens, and the optic nerve. And then finally, at the very back of the eyeball there, where you've actually got the optic nerve kind of coming together, if you like, is the blind spot. So what we find in that little area is that we don't have any of those receptors on our retina, hence the phrase blind spot. So in terms of what each of those parts actually does then, our pupil is basically a hole, and its whole purpose is to allow light to enter the eye. Now, in order to control the size of the pupil, the coloured part around it, the iris, actually changes the size of our pupil. So the iris's function is to control the size of the pupil and therefore control how much light enters our eye. Inside the eye we had the lens. Now the whole purpose of our lens is to focus the light that enters our eye onto the retina. And the retina contains those light sensitive cells which will detect the light and convert it into electrical impulses. And then finally, our optic nerve is the actual nerve that's going to carry that impulse from the eye to our brain. What we've got are two different types of vision. So the first one is the one that we as humans have, which is called binocular vision. So this is categorized by having both eyes facing forwards and able to focus on the same thing. So binocular vision is very good for judging distance, which is why you can actually work out how far away something is and why you can catch things quite easily. And predators tend to have this binocular vision. However, you don't have a very wide field of view. And you can test this by looking straight ahead, put your fingers in front of you, and then move them around towards the back of your head until you can't see them anymore. And that will give you an idea of how wide your field of view actually is you're probably going to get to roughly equal with the side of your head before you lose sight of your fingers. The second type of vision is monocular vision. So in this case, we're thinking about prey animals. Now their eyes are located on the sides of their head and this gives them a much wider field of view so they can see a lot more around them. Very important for prey because it means that they can see more things that are likely to come and try and sneak up on them. However, the downside of this is that you're not a very good judge of distance. So as a prey animal, you might spot that fox coming, but you may not be very good at working out exactly how far away from you it actually is. In order to actually judge how far something is, in order to judge the distance, then what our brain actually does is it compares the image it gets from each eye. So as you're looking at something, both of your eyes is getting a slightly different image. Now, what your brain actually then does, is it looks at those two images it's received, and if they're very similar to one another, then your brain knows you're looking at something far away. Whereas if you're looking at something very close, then the two images will be quite different. So your brain will interpret that as being much closer. And you can test this just by looking at something far away, and if you close one eye and then the other, you'll see the image doesn't really change much. If you do the same thing but looking at something up close, it looks like the book or the words that you're looking at start to jump around. So that's what tells us in our brain that that object is much closer than the one we're looking at in the distance. In order to actually focus on near or far objects, our eye has to undergo a change. Now the thing that's got to change inside our eye is the actual shape of the lens. And this is a process called accommodation. Now in order to change this actual shape of our lens, what we see are that we've got three things really involved in this whole process of accommodation. We've got the ring of the ciliary muscle, we've got the suspensory ligaments, and we've got the lens. 
So if we think about viewing something up close, first of all, then the ciliary muscle will be contracted, the suspensory ligaments are going to slacken, and that means that our lens becomes more rounded and fatter. If, however, we're viewing something far away, then what we see is basically the opposites. So the ciliary muscle is going to become relaxed, the suspensory ligaments will become taut, and our lens becomes much flatter and thinner in shape. We do have a few problems associated with vision, and the first one is an inherited condition, so one caused by your genes, which is red-green colour blindness. Now, in this condition, what happens is people can't clearly tell the difference between red and green. So you can test this yourself. If you look at the picture in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen there, there's a number written in a different colour. If you can make out the number, then you don't have any problem with your actual colour vision there. If you can't make out that number, then there's a chance that you may be suffering from some degree of red-green colour blindness. And the reason behind that is that you're lacking certain specialised cells in the retina that allow us to distinguish between red and green. Our second vision problem then is being long-sighted. So what we find if someone is long-sighted, they can see things in the distance very clearly, but as soon as you try and look at something up close, like reading a book, then it's not clear and it starts to blur a little bit. And the final problem we've got is being short-sighted. So in this one, what we find is that anything you're reading up close is nice and clear, but anything you're trying to look at in the distance becomes unclear and blurred. So the reason behind this is if we think about being short-sighted first of all, then your eyeball is too long. So if you look at the picture on the left hand side, you can see that what's actually happening as a result of that is that the light rays are meeting in front of the retina. So your final image is going to be blurred because as those rays cross over, then you get that blurred image forming as a result of where they hit your retina. If we consider long sight with the diagram on the right hand side there, basically the eyeball's too short. So what we're finding there is that the light rays are not actually managing to meet on the retina. They're trying to focus kind of behind the retina. So what we get is a blurred image again. We can take some very simple steps in order to correct our vision. And we do this by using lenses of some form, whether they be contact lenses or glasses. So what we'd actually do to correct our short sight is to use a concave or diverging lens. Now, what this concave or diverging lens actually does is it's going to bend the rays of light outwards before they enter the eye. So that means that as opposed to our rays of light obviously crossing before they reach the retina, then they're going to be focused on the retina in this case. If we think about the long sight, we'd be using a different type of lens here. We'd be using what's called a convex or a converging lens. And what that one does is it bends the rays of light inwards before it gets into the eye, and therefore the light rays will meet on the retina again, giving us a nice clear image.